Hello everyone, and welcome to my review of Swift Backup, an app that is somewhat fitting on this channel, especially when you need to jump between custom ROMs, or if you just like to have a copy of everything on your phone. Now before we continue here, in order to get the most out of using Swift Backup, you must be rooted, and it does help if you can spare a few dollars for the premium version, which we'll touch on again very soon. So what can Swift Backup do for you? Well in this case, I'll be reviewing the premium version which can be yours for a one-time payment of $8.99 or a recurring yearly payment of $2.99. Currently the premium version offers batch backup and restore, scheduled backups, launcher app shortcuts and night mode. Swift Backup can save your apps and their app data if you're rooted, your messages and your call logs, wallpaper and even Wi-Fi networks and that requires root access as well. It can also upload and sync your backups to Google Drive, and only Google Drive. System applications can be frozen in the Apps menu as well. We also get something called Scheduled Backups, which works quite well in fact. You get options to backup apps, messages, and call logs at a time and battery condition of your choosing. Scheduled Backups can also have their backups uploaded to Google Drive as well, which is set by a per category level. However, scheduled backups do not support backing up wallpapers or Wi-Fi networks at this time. But for app backups, exclusions, exceptions can be made, but all messages and call logs will have to be backed up if enabled. Now on to the settings that you can change in Swift Backup, and the first thing is app backups. Swift allows you to blacklist apps with two modes to choose from, either completely hiding it from any backup or restore option, or to ensure that the app is only backed up or restored during batch operations. You can decide if apps that are restored are granted all of their runtime permissions, and specify a backup size limit when uploading your app backups. Your app backups with data are encryptable, and can also be compressed, which is on by default, at the expense of course of your backup speeds. And as for app data, Swift Backup can also back up the app's cache, their expansions such as the OBB data files that are usually downloaded by games and other large apps, so that may contribute greatly to your backup sizes if turned on and also external app data which is stored in your device's Android slash data folder. In the next menu item we have managing space which just shows you all the space that your backups take up and will pretty much allow you to erase all the backups created by Swift Backup. Next up we have an option to whitelist Swift Backup from battery optimizations also known as Doze Mode. I'd recommend that you ensure that Swift Backup is not being optimized especially if you plan on using the backup scheduling feature or if you intend to run backups or you have a large number of apps that need to be backed up and you don't want to be in the app the whole time. And now finally for some minor or nitpicky items that I've discovered when using Swift Backup for a while now. And the first thing is that when you open the app for the first time, you are required to grant storage permissions which is quite normal. And the next thing is to sign in with your Google account. Now you might be okay with this and it might be obvious for the Google Drive backup and sync functionality of the app. But I guess this just means that you can't really uh, quickly restore some backed up apps on a device that is offline or doesn't have a Google account signed in on, which is a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. And one other thing is the Home tab Quick Actions section cannot be reordered or changed in any way. Currently it's just options to back up all apps or to restore all apps, and to be able to choose which messages and call logs are to be restored. So in conclusion, Swift Backup does what it sets out to do to back up your important data in minutes with a refreshing and elegant design with Google Drive integration. So if you're looking for things like that, you can't really go wrong. I think the feature selection in this app is quite reasonable. Maybe not for $7, but that is a lifetime license, you see. You could just pay $2.99 for a year of use, and I guess renew that if you want to. So if you sign up on that $2.99 yearly plan, you can actually cancel it, and you still get to use the premium features for the remaining year, which is something that's quite good. So if you want to test it out, I just gave three bucks in here and I think it works quite well. And if there are any other improvements that come along the way, then there'll be a welcome addition to Swift Backup, which I think is already very, very competent. So that's all folks, thanks for watching. And as usual, you can join us on Discord, link down below, and also in the comment section on YouTube as well. And as always, happy flashing.